वैराग्ययुक्ति आदानस्तृण दंत याचे पुनः पुनः जन्म जन्मने हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू वन लास्ट टाइम फॉर थैंक यू पार्टिसिपेटिंग in the service of the lotus feet of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu the two verses that we just chanted to start our discussion with were composed by <coughs> shri laguna das goswami in the glorification of shri la sanatan goswami and shri la rupa goswami respectively shri la laguna das goswami says वैराग्य युग भक्ति रसम प्रयत्न अपाय यन्मांधम कृपा बुदी युख दुखी सनातन तम प्रभु श्रीपाद सनातन गोस्वामी पर दुख दुखी सींग मै सफरिंग ही स्टार्ट इट सफरिंग एंड वॉट वॉज मै सफरिंग ही सॉ द फैक्ट दैट आई वॉज डिजायरिंग मेटीरियल इंजॉयमेंट Now, was Raghunath Das Goswami actually desiring material enjoyment? Never. He doesn't even know what material enjoyment is. But in his humility and honesty to his personality, because great personalities have a different yardstick altogether. Sometimes it's it's little bewildering to understand. Shri La Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says, anyone who hears my name loses all bias credit. His name has Krishna there. How can anyone lose any pious credit? I am more fallen than uh, the worm in the stool. Now that's not true. I am more sinful than Jagai and Madhai. Now that's not true. Anyone who chants my name eternally rots in hell. Krishna Das. How can anyone rot in hell? Well, pure Vaishnavas have a different yardstick altogether. in our society if someone devotes one minute for krishna amidst those who don't devote anything they are considered to be pure and in the yastik of pure vaishnavas if there is a disturbance in their meditation even for half a minute in the assembly of those who have uninterrupted meditation that is considered to be really abominable there is no one more sinful than i am my meditation is broken I am not able to focus on Krishna 24 hours a day. It is only 23 hours and 58 minutes. <laughs> For two minutes, my mind is switching into material objects. How abominable! Now the society that they compare themselves with are all those who are thinking of Krishna 26 hours a day, <laughs> all day and night. Shri La Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, devotees must go off to sleep at night. only to try meditating on krishna with closed eyes this is why we go off to rest so during the day we meditate on krishna with open eyes and at night we meditate on krishna with closed eyes for this purpose so this is the caliber they compare themselves with acharyas higher in bhajan in sadhana and therefore they feel i am most abominable like shri rupa goswami also in one of his works he compares his life to dhruva maharaj's life and he says dhruva maharaj didn't eat anything didn't drink anything he even gave up his breath to get krishna if that is the sacrifice needed to get krishna i will never get him I am insignificant and abominable and sinful in comparison to Dhruva Maharaj. I am a big blot on the path of bhakti. 
Why? Because they compare themselves to those who have got Krishna and the endeavor that those who got Krishna put in, the efforts that they put in. But we oftentimes compare ourselves with people who are not remembering Krishna. And then they say, you are a senior devotee. And the mind says, yes. <laughs> because we tend to compare ourselves with people who are not even doing as much as we are doing. So the, the, the lesson that Raghunath Das Goswami is indirectly teaching us, <coughs> that humility is cultivated by serving those who are better in bhakti and by comparing our sincerity and dedication to those who have actually achieved Krishna with their sincerity and dedication. We understand how insignificant we are in comparison to their humongous, significant stature. So Raghunath Das Goswami says, Vairagya yug bhakti rasam prayatnair apaya yanmam anabhipsum andham. I was not ready to drink the path or the nectar of renunciation and pure devotional service. But Kripam Budhi, this ocean of mercy, Paradukha Dukhi Sanatanam Tam Prabhu Mashrayami, he lifted me from that. So what is Raghunath Das Goswami referring to? The point that he decided to commit suicide. And it was Sripad Sanatan Goswami who saved him from that debacle. And then Srila Raghunath Das Goswami also offers a pranam to Srila Rupa Goswami. He says, Adatanas Tranam Dantai Idam Yache Punaha Punaha. Rupa Goswami had a straw, a blade of grass clasped between his teeth, approaching Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But I, with a blade of grass clasped between my teeth, approached Rupa Goswami. And Idam Yache Punaha Punaha. And I beg this eternally. Again and again. What am I begging? This is Raghunath Das Goswami after 45 years of bhajan on the banks of Radha Kund begging this. Srimad Rupa Padam Bhojam Dhuli Syam Janma Janmani. If Rupa Goswami says, I am ready to fulfill one desire of yours, I will say, let me become the dust at your lotus feet forever, every lifetime. So how exalted is Rupa Goswami? That Raghunath Das Goswami living in Radha Kund aspires to be the dust at his lotus feet. So being Rupanuga means to aspire to be the dust at the lotus feet of Rupa Goswami. Which literally practically means to follow his instructions. Because whenever someone walks, he leaves behind some dust. So which means to collect the dust of their path, meaning to walk on the footsteps, to follow their footsteps, which means to follow the path that they have tread, which means to follow their instructions. <clears throat> so this was a philosophical beginning. But let us resume from where we left off last night. Does anyone remember where we were last night in our discussion? Yes. She's a, she, she was outside. Yeah. Mm. And where was this? Yeah. Varanasi. Who was it? Who said it? Mm. Yes. Wonderful. Chandrasekhar Acharya was an associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Varanasi. Now let us begin. Is everyone ready? Yeah. Please fasten your seatbelts. This is the last. <laughs> this is the last session. We had Raghunath Bhatta Goswami on 21st, Raghunath Das Goswami on 22nd, Srila Gopal Bhatta Goswami on 23rd, Srila Jeeva Goswami on 24th. We started with Rupa and Sanatan last night and then we continue today, 26th. It's kind of interesting that the first session, the, the first seminar that we did at this temple was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instructions to Rupa Goswami. So we gave three nights to Rupa Goswami then. So I was thinking, this night we should dedicate it to Sanatana Goswami. <laughs> and by giving it to Sanatana Goswami, 
who is the spiritual master of Rupa Goswami, they are actually also giving it to Rupa Goswami. Of course, we will not be able to cover all the wonderful pastimes. It will take me seven days only to discuss Rupa and Sanatana. There is so much that Chaitanya Bhagavad Chaitanya Charitamrit Bhakti Ratnakar describes. But in the time that we have, let us begin. Srila Sanatan Goswami, he reached Varanasi. And he got this news that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in Varanasi at the house of Chandrasekhar Acharya. If you remember the discussion that we had with Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, we mentioned at that time Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he would come to Varanasi, he would stay at the house of Chandrasekhar Acharya, but he would accept prasadam at the house of Tapana Mishra. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the house of Chandrasekhar Acharya. And our Sripad Sanatan Goswami, with his beard and mustache and with his chadar, literally his own clothes. He was sitting outside the house of Chandrasekhar Acharya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Chandrasekhar Acharya, there is a self-realized, pure-hearted Uttam Adhikari Mahabhagavat outside your house. Someone who has developed pure ecstatic love for Krishna in his heart, he's outside. So Chandrasekhar Acharya went out to get this devotee in and he was looking for someone with tilak and kanti mala and a staff and, and sannyas robes and but he didn't find anyone so he came back he said there is no one Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said is anyone there he said there is a Muslim beggar outside Dharavesh he's very ill clad and dirty he looks a Muslim Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, that's the person I'm looking for. Get him, get him in. So Chandrasekhar Acharya went and held the hand of Sripad Sanatana Goswami who was sitting down, looking down. He wasn't even ready to, he wasn't even ready to knock the door unless he was invited inside. So he was sitting outside. Chandrasekhar Acharya by force took him in. And looking at Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Patsanatham Goswami realizing that all his bonds and attachment and entanglement in this world were all severed by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Fell like a stick crying. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu looked at Sanatan Goswami, picked him up and was almost going to embrace and Sanatan Goswami Pat said, No, my Lord, don't embrace me. Mahaprabhu said, Why? He said, Because I am very fallen. In my consciousness, I am very dirty, I am very polluted. I am very sinful and even externally I am contaminated. I am really abominable. I have been walking for so many days and my associates are all fallen. My services and my past has been fallen. There is nothing good in me. You just keep me at distance and engage me in menial service. But please don't call me close to you. Shaitanya Mahaprabhu looked at Sanatan was for me and he said, embracing you is purifying for my body. <laughs> and he forcefully embraced Sri Pat Sanatan Goswami. Sri Pat Sanatan Goswami was revolting, said, my Lord, no, no, don't do this, don't embrace me. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced him completely with a smile. So lovingly he embraced him. Then he told Chandrasekhar Acharya, shave him up. I didn't tell you the story yesterday. I grew a beard and mustache and stubble for so many days only so that I could shave it up today to tell you the story. Because <laughs> I can tell you the story with an unshaven face. Of course, it's another thing that Sanatan Goswami had to even shave his head. I thought that would be too much. <laughs> so Chandrasekhar Acharya shaved him up. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Chandrasekhar Acharya, offer fresh clothes to Sanatan. Not like this. Sanatan Goswami said, no, no, no. New clothes, fresh clothes don't look good on me. I don't want them. It's okay. I'm, I'm okay with these torn clothes. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu smiled. He wanted to see. He wanted to touch and see Sanatan Goswami's portions of renunciation. 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took Sanatan by the hand and went to Tapan Mishra's house. He said, let's have prasadam. So he accepted prasadam there. Tapan Mishra gifted new clothes to Sanatan Goswami. Sanatan Goswami said, I don't want these new clothes. You keep them. But I have to offer something to you. You came and honored prasadam in my house. You're a very exalted soul. What can I give you? Sanatan Goswami said, will you give me what I ask for? He said, yes, anything that you ask for. Sanatan Goswami Pad said, give me an old dhoti with holes. Tapan Mishra said, what are, you, what are you going to do with it? Sanatan Goswami said, I'm going to make chadar, dhoti and coven out of it. And he ripped it into small pieces and he made a chadar and he made a coven and he made a dhoti and somehow managed. After he went to Tapan Mishra's house with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, other devotees realized, oh, pure Vaishnava Sanatan has come, let's invite him for prasadam. Sanatan Goswami realized, no, I have come here for service, to serve, not to take service. He rejected all the prasadam invitations. He said, I will only do Madhukari. And the smile that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had on his face went wider and wider and wider as he saw Sanatan Goswami displaying unparalleled renunciation. But there was one thing still with Sanatan Goswami. The woolen opulent blanket that his brother-in-law Sri Kant had given in Hajipur. He said, please stay with me. Sanatan said, I'm not going to stay with you. At least accept my gift. Okay, if that is what makes me leave from this place quick, I'll accept it. So he carried it with him. Now he would wear that on top of his body. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't say a word, just looked at his chadar. Just looked at his chadar. And when he looked at his chadar, <laughs> this is the most beautiful thing as a speaker. <laughs> Sripad Sanatan Goswami was having this woolen opulent blanket. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just glanced on this blanket. He didn't speak a word. Sanatan Goswami realized, Oh, I'm giving up prasad invitations. I'm giving up uh, new clothes. I'm giving up this. I'm giving up that. But I still have this blanket. And Mahaprabhu is glancing on this blanket without speaking a word. <laughs> so I must give it up. So he went onto the banks of the Ganga. And there was this old Vaishnav washing his old torn quilt with holes. Mm. Shripad Sanatana Goswami told this Vaishnav, I fall at your feet and beg for this benediction. Can you exchange this opulent, luxurious, woolen, comfortable blanket with your torn old quilt? He said, you are making fun of me? <laughs> Just because you have a better cloth, you are trying to mock. So Nathan Goswami said, no, please understand my mood. I really am begging for it. I will understand that you shower your mercy on me if you give it to me. I will give this blanket to you. Please give it to me. The Vaishnava found this was mysterious. Why would anybody do that? But he still gave it to him. It was wet, dripping with water, with holes and very old. Coming out in shreds. And Sripad Sanatana Goswami took that. He squeezed the water out, put it on his body, and came in front of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, renunciation is indeed a very attractive opulence. When you see someone with a lot of flashy things, he turns you off. But when you see someone who can live under a tree with nothing of this world, that is very attractive. Is it not? Very beautiful. The less things that you have and the more happy and comfortable you have amidst those fewer things in life, the more opulent you are. I went to one place and just above their kitchen, they had the kitchen wall, they had put a slogan. Collecting and accumulating gadgets doesn't mean one is rich. True wealth means having satisfaction in the fewer things in life. So I remember our Goswamis didn't have anything of this world. They were so happy. 
When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw this torn old quilt, he looked at Sripad Sanatana Goswami and he said, where is your woolen blanket? So, my Lord, I realized you didn't like it. You were glancing on it again and again. Gaur Kripa Kataksha. Sidelong glance of mercy. So I gave it up and I got this. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exclaimed, very good. He said, you are 99% detached. And this is the last shred of attachment that you've given up in this world. Oh, Sanatan, you're completely detached in this material world. You're not attached to anything, and this is blissful to see. Sri Bhatt Sanatan Goswami approached Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with folded palms. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again approached him to embrace him. And Sanatan Goswami said, No, my Lord, please don't embrace me. And Mahaprabhu pulled him close and embraced. Sri Pat Sanatan Goswami, after the embrace, fell at the feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, rolling on the ground. He said, My Lord, I have come all the way to see you, and you are cheating me like this. Kayami, Kene Amar, Jane Tapa Troy, Iha Nahi Jani Prabhu, Kemane Hita Hoy. I don't know who I am eternally. I don't know what my relationship with Krishna is. I don't know why I'm suffering by the three folds of material nature. Adi daivik klesha, adi bhautik klesha, adhyatmik klesha. Why I'm being tossed by goodness, passion and ignorance. I don't know why I'm forced to be born, grow old, diseased and die. I don't know what my goal is. I don't know whom to worship and what path to take to get to my goal. I don't know where I'm going after death and I don't know where I came before birth. My Lord, the whole universe seems a mystery to me. I fall at your lotus feet and request you to kindly dispel my darkness of ignorance. Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami describes that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke on ten subject matters. First and foremost, he spoke about Atma Tattva or soul. He spoke about how the soul eternally is Sat, Chit and Ananda. Is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. Completely spiritual and has nothing to do with this world. Even while being in this body is not touched by the subtle or the gross body. It remains completely aloof. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained how Sri Krishna, the Supreme Lord, has three kinds of energies. He has the Antaranga Shakti or the internal potency through which he performs his beautiful pastimes. He has the Bahiranga Shakti or the external material energy by which Jivas get deluded in this world. And then he said, there is a third kind of energy called as Tatastha Shakti or marginal potency where the souls, the spirit souls are included. As a second point of discussion, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke about how the soul suffers. He says, this soul belongs to Krishna, but when it is covered by Maya, it is completely deluded and as a result of false ego, forgets his true position. Instead of serving Krishna, only desires to enjoy, enjoy and enjoy and enjoy and as a result suffers miserably. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to illustrate this point, gives an example. He says, <clears throat> when the king orders the guards to punish a criminal, the guards take the face of the criminal and plunge the face in the water. And the face is under water for almost a minute and he's gasping for breath, almost close to death. And then he's pulled out. <gasps> Only for a couple of seconds till the time he settles down. And when he feels I'm so blissful, <laughs> plunged back again. <laughs> again, he gasps for breath, and the gods keep it for a minute, and then, <gasps> <gasps> back and forth. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, this is how the living being gets tossed in suffering, for millions and billions of lives. 
And the portion between suffering is considered to be happiness. While this is not even close to Ananda. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained, absence of suffering is not happiness. And he said, what is passed out as is passed on as um, happiness in this world is temporary. Like for example, one rasgulla. You eat the rasgulla, pleasure is gone. Then you want one more. So you come another mangalati <laughs> to get the mangala sweets from our pujari. When you have two, three, four rasgullas, what happens? The taste that you have for the fifth is nowhere close to the first. Which means joy doesn't exist in the rasgulla. It's in the perception of the object. So it is temporary. And it reduces. Ultimately becomes disgusting and you say no more. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then explains. Who is the ultimate worshipable Lord? He says it is Sri Krishna, who is the source of all the Vishnu Murtis, who is worshipable even for the demigods. He is the source of all the souls. This is where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Jivera Swarupa Hoy, Krishnera Nityadas, Krishnera Tatastha Shakti Bhed Abhed Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains how the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna tries to revive the soul who's caught up in the net of material nature through three ways. He helps internally as super soul, externally as sadhu, and as a medium of the Vedas. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu goes to profusely explain how the Vedas deal with three subject matters. Sambandha, Abhideya, and Prayojan Tattva. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains Sambandha means our relationship with Krishna. Abhideya means acting on that relationship. And Prayojan means the ultimate fruit of acting on that relationship. For example, Sambandha is the university. Enroll, enrollment, admission into a university, Sambandha. Abhideya is studying, taking courses, trying to clear one exam after another is Abhideya, acting on that relationship. And Prayojan is graduation. So our relationship is with Krishna. The acting on that relationship is Bhakti. And the fruit of acting on this relationship is Prem Tattva, developing pure love for Krishna. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains the glories of Bhakti. And he gives a very beautiful example. He says there is an astrologer by the name Sarvajna. And he helps a person. Now this is a story that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is telling Sanatana Goswami. The reason I am taking this very briefly as an overview is because this is very important for all of us to know. The question that Sanatana Goswami Pad has asked Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are all interested in knowing. Because this discussion is the essence of all Shastra. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describes Bhakti by an example. He says an astrologer by the name Sarvatnya, he helps a son of a very wealthy departed father to find the rich treasure that his father has left behind. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives an example. The astrologer says to the, to the son that there is treasure somewhere and I can help you find with hints. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains to this son who is poor and who is ready to inherit the property of the father. He says, if you dig north, there is a black poisonous snake ready to devour you. If you dig west, there is a ghost which is going to appear and haunt you. And if you dig south, you will be bitten profusely by the wasps and the bees. But if you dig little in the eastern direction, you will get your pot. 
of gold coins. What is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu trying to explain? He explains that digging north means the process of getting mukti, trying to merge with the Lord. That means a snake is trying to devour your identity. You merge into Brahman and you lose your identity. That path. Sayuchi Mukti. Digging west and being haunted by a ghost represents the path of speculation. How do I get there? Srila Prabhupada would explain that Krishna is our father and Vedas are our mother. You go to the mother to ask where the father is and who the father is. You don't go asking the whole city who is my father. You will get definitely get more than one. So the western direction is the process of speculative knowledge, haunting by a ghost. The ghost haunts over the mind of the speculator and doesn't let him realize God. And digging south and being bitten by the bees is the path of karma kanda. All the austerity and all the effort put in is like the biting and the chewing of the wasps and the bees. But little digging in the eastern direction is the process of bhakti. You can dig through all directions and face the miserable bee stings, the negative effects of digging even deep. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says just little digging in the eastern direction, the process of bhakti gives the pot of nectar quick, the pot of gold coins, pure devotional service. Sripad Sanatan Goswami continues hearing and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu how to give this devotional service Sri Krishna comes in different ages in different avatars. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quotes how he appears, how the, not he, but he says how the Supreme Lord appears in a white complexion in Satya Yuga, in a green complexion in Treta Yuga, in a bluish black complexion in Dwapar Yuga, and then just keeps quiet as far as Kali is concerned. <laughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining to Sanatana Goswami how the Supreme Lord appears in different colors, in different incarnations, at different times. Satya, Treta and Dwapar. And then he keeps quiet as far as Kali is concerned. Sri Sanatana Goswami asked Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how does he look in Kali? <laughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, you must see the evidence and the proofs given in the scriptures. Sri Sanatana Goswami says, I know. He appears in a golden complexion, puts his hands up in the air and gives the congregational chanting of Krishna's holy names. He takes sannyas and walks around like an intoxicated madman. Sri Shaitanya Mahaprabhu smiles looking at Sanatana Goswami and says, Don't play tricks on me. <laughs> then very quickly, Sri Shaitanya Mahaprabhu switches the subject matter and speaks about the sweetness of Vrindavan. He says how the sweetness and the intimacy of the residents of Vrindavan is higher than even Mathura or Dwarka. What to speak about Sunda. And finally, as the tenth point in this discussion, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, for the soul to be free from the net of material nature, he must perform one of the 64 limbs of devotional service, where the top five are Sadhu Sangha Nama Kirtan Bhagavata Shravan Mathura Vasa Shri Murti Shraddhaya Seva Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains to Sanatana Goswami the five power potent Panchanga bhakti, limbs of devotional service, which fructify even by little sincere performance of even one of them are associating with devotees, pure Vaishnavas, Sadhu Sangha, serving the deities with reverence and with love, studying, reading, and speaking Srimad Bhagavatam, Mathura Vas or Dham Vas residing in a holy place of pilgrimage without committing offenses. And five, to come together, congregate together as devotees and chant the names of Krishna as Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare.
And saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu smiles at Sri Patsanatan Goswami and says, I have given you all this knowledge. Now you must understand that I am going to empower you. You must go to Vrindavan and perform services on my behalf. So Sri Sanatan Goswami leaves. He heads towards Vrindavan from Varanasi. Now when he reaches Vrindavan, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami describes Shripad Sanatan Goswami meets a devotee, a pure-hearted, sincere devotee by the name Subuddhi Rai. Now Subuddhi Rai takes Shripad Sanatan Goswami around for Parikrama in the 12 forests of Vrindavan and makes a permanent place of residence at Shripad Sanatan Goswami says, No, I will live under trees every night. So here is Shripad Sanatan Goswami with one cloth, kopin, a torn old quilt, begging bowl, and staying under different trees every night. And Srila Prabhupada explains the Goswamis didn't even want to get attached to one tree. What if the tree dies? They would think, oh, the tree under which I slept. No. <laughs> so they would switch every night to different trees. The Bhagavatam describes from a viewpoint of a transcendentalist. Why do we need a bed? I am not saying this Bhagavatam describes. Why do we need a bed when the Supreme Lord has given the whole earth to sleep on? Why do we need a roof? And then have false ceiling there when Krishna has given natural ceiling in the form of stars and moon and open sky? Why do we need a house when we have caves? Why do we need food when we have fruits? Why do we need a pillow when we have our hand? Why do we need clothes and endeavor for it when we have barks from trees? Why not give every single moment for cleansing our heart and consciousness without endeavoring for anything material in this world? You endeavor to get material objects and then endeavor to maintain material objects and then endeavor when they deteriorate and then endeavor to detach yourself from it. Material nature is very brutal. We get a big house and we start paying off every month for 30 years, 30, 35 years. And then when we finish paying off, we are in our mid fifties. There is a heart attack. And the only thing that we have lived all our life paying money every month for is the house. And after you pay it off and you kick the house, material nature kicks and takes the house away. Very brutal. And all the living beings whom we are attached to. Wife, children, siblings, parents, friends, well-wishers. At death, you can be whoever, whenever, however, whichever, but none of our appeal works. And after death, it's so brutal. Husband and wife live together for 40, 50 years and one dies, the other doesn't even get to speak to that person even once. Gone, finished, in one second, done. That person cannot speak to you, you cannot, it's just so brutal. You cannot speak to that person, that person cannot speak to you. Everything that you have shared together is all gone. Just in your memories. And interestingly, that person doesn't even remember us. New game, a fresh memory. And again, you start with this gunny bag, the sack of carrying it all our life. And then again, brutal energy. Material nature, billions of times. But still, we don't realize. Why not give every second for self-realization? Our Goswamis live like that. And this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Prabhupada want us to do. They want us to become pure Vaishnavas. During Prabhupada's time, even Grihasthas lived in the, in the temple like Brahmacharis. It's, it's amazing. How sacrifice? How could? How much they could sacrifice? 
But nowadays Krishna gives us so much, but still we can't sacrifice anything. We just give lip service. So Sripad Sanatana Goswami lived under trees every night. And then he heard his dear brother Rupa Goswami has gone to Jagannath Puri. So he set out, let me walk to Jagannath Puri. <laughs> so he started walking to Jagannath Puri. And it was a long walk. No proper food, cutting through jungles, very, very dangerous wild animals. No proper roads, rocks and mud and stones and nothing properly paved. Contaminated water, no fixed shelter, nothing, no arrangement to honor prasadam, just depending on Krishna. And as a result, drinking all the polluted, contaminated water on the way, Sripad Sanatan Goswami's divine transcendental body got infected with blood and pus oozing out of his body. The body was irritated completely and oozing pus wounds completely. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates were so merciful that even when they had wounds and pus and open sore and they would have insects and worms sitting on it, sometimes they would walk and it would fall from the body. They would pick it up and put it back. Why? They would think another jiva would stamp, another living being, would, human being would stamp on this ant or this worm or this fly. I am separating this jiva from their food. <laughs> Seeing Krishna in everything. We find it difficult to see Krishna in Krishna. This is the difference. Atra sarga visargascha sthanam poshanam utaya manvantara ishanu katha niroda mukti mashvaya. The seventh kind of Bhagavatam deals with utaya, which means two different natures face to face. So one nature is Hiranya Kashipu, who did not see Narasimha even when he appeared. Even when he appeared, he was trying to analyze what is this? Because he had never seen. Not for us, we have Narasimha pictures and Narasimha story and Narasimha Arati and Narasimha Ashtakam, Sahasranam, Ashtotra Shatanam, Ahobilam, Simhachalam. We have all of this. So we know Narasimha there. Imagine he was seeing Narasimha for the first time. He never even conceived what this is. At the head of Narasimha, they have touched Brahmalok. And his lotus feet were playing in Patal. Roaring in the middle. So he couldn't see Krishna when he appeared and Prahlad could see Krishna in a pillar. Narasimha Hiranyakashipu asked, is your Lord in the pillar? And Prahlad looked in the pillar and Narasimha winked and said, I am ready. He was in the pillar. He said, tell him you can see me. I am ready. Attack. So it's interesting. Consciousness. Two different consciousness. One seeing Krishna in everything and one not being able to see Krishna even in Krishna conscious objects. So devotees are actually Krishna's property. Not being able to seek the devotees in connection to Krishna is demoniac. The 11th canto of Bhagavatam describes worshipping the deity very nicely and not being able to deal with devotees properly is the sign of neophytes. Srivat Sanatana Goswami when he walked through with all this open sore and blood and it was troubling him so much. Sri Pat Sanatan Goswami started thinking to himself, I am fallen in my consciousness. I am fallen in my birth. I am fallen and sinful and polluted and contaminated in my past activities, in my association, in my inclinations. And now I, the only hope I have is to serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through my body and become purified and that body is contaminated and polluted. Why should I even live? He made a plan. 
As soon as I reach Jagannath Puri and there is Rath Yatra, I'll throw myself under the cartwheels in front of the dancing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and give up my body. Then I'll become purified and it's an auspicious departure. Then in my next life, I'll get a very glorious birth and I can start afresh. He reached Jagannath Puri with this intention. And he went straight to Siddha Bakul, the place of bhajan of now, Siddha Bakul is a very mysterious tree. <laughs> How many of us have seen Siddha Bakul? Very, very mysterious place. A few hundred years ago, let's say 100, 150 years ago, <clears throat> the temple officials in Jagannath Puri, they were collecting wood for making the, the, the deities and at the same time the rat and everything. And they fell short of wood. So there was a um, decision made that this tree is anyway very old and is utterly not to anyone's use. Let us cut this tree down and with that wood try to make something. As soon as they made this decision, overnight the tree went hollow. So now even if you cut the tree, you can't do anything. Now, if you go, the tree is hollow, but he continues to live because that is the place which has heard the Shuddha Nam vibration from the lotus lips of Sri Padhari Das Thakur. Sanatan Goswami came there, fell at the feet of Sri Padhari Das Thakur. If you kindly remember, they last met at Ramakeli when Rupa and Sanatan were taken to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through Haridas and Nithai. So Haridas Thakur fell at the lotus feet of Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami fell at the lotus feet of Sripad Haridas Thakur. They mutually started glorifying each other. And Sripad Sanatana Goswami asked Haridas Thakur, Where is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And how can we take darshan? Sripad Haridas Thakur said, We don't have to go anywhere. He comes here every day. And the good news is, He is expected any moment. So you should stay, stay here. And as soon as they were discussing this, the golden complexion, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, very beautiful, wonderful form, enters the bhajan kutir of Sri Padhari Dasta. So both of them fall at their feet, at the lotus feet of Sri, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like a rod, and they won't get up. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu forcibly picked up Sri Pad Sanatana Goswami, who was filled with blood and pus oozing over his body and he pulled and Sri Pat Sanatana was so his heart was breaking he said no my lord no no not this time look my body is dirty and polluted no and Mahaprabhu pulled him close and embraced and all the blood and the pus oozing from Sri Pat Sanatana was from his body smeared on the body the golden beautiful body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sri Pat Sanatana was from he said my lord why are you doing this Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I do this for my purification. And in that assembly while speaking, he looked at Haridas Thakur and he said, Haridas, can you believe this person has the audacity of destroying someone else's property? And Haridas Thakur had no frame of reference. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told, this Sanatan who has given his body to me makes plans of giving up his body under the wrath of Jagannath. Isn't this nonsense? How could you do this, Sanatan? Sanatan Goswami said, there is no use of my existence. Why should I live? People should live to do bhajan. I can't do bhakti. My body is contaminated. What will I do? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu looks at Haridas Thakur and Haridas Thakur says, My Lord, what can I say? Sripad Sanatan Goswami, out of his genuine humility, wants to offer it back to you. Just like people enter the Ganga and take the water of the Ganga and offer it back to the Ganga, Sanatan Goswami has taken the Ganga water of his body from you and he wants, it, wants to offer it back to you. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, No. I am going to mysteriously work through his body. 
and send him to Vrindavan. I am forced to be here in Jagannath Puri. My mother Shachi Mata has said, don't go to Vrindavan, stay in Jagannath Puri because Navdrip and Puri are like two rooms in the same house. I keep getting information about your life. So stay here. She has tied me to Jagannath Puri. But I need Sanatan to work in Vrindavan. Oh Sanatan, you cannot give up your body like this. You have given your body to me. And if by giving up one's body you get Krishna, I would have given up my body a million times without a second thought. But it is only by devotional service that one can get Krishna. One cannot get Krishna by any other process. So give up this nonsense thought. And maintain your body and soul together. Sri Patsanatam Goswami agreed. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became pacified. He looked at Sanatana Goswami and he said, Do you know Rupa Goswami was here for 10 months? And he just left 10 days ago. And I also got to know about the departure of your brother Anupam. So Sri Pat Sanatana Goswami started speaking about the glories of Anupam. He said, Anupam was such a great devotee of Sri Ram. Rupa and myself, we tried to convince him once to chant the name of Krishna. And Anupam said, yes, I will try. I will certainly, I, I cannot say a no because I've been instructed by my superiors, Rupa and Sanatan. So I will try. But the next day, Anupam came running saying, I'm committing suicide. <laughs> <laughs> now this is the second brother. <coughs> Why would you say like that? Asked Rupa and Sanatan. He said, either way, I have failed the purpose of my existence. <coughs> Just the thought that I have to accept the lotus feet of Krishna in my heart sends thunderbolt and shivers down my spine in the sense that I have to give up the lotus feet of Sri Ram to accept the lotus feet of Krishna and this is abominable, I can't even think. I cannot stop thinking about Sri Ram. And at the same time, I'm not able to agree <coughs> and I'm offending by disagreeing and disobeying the instruction of Rupa and Sanatan. I want to commit suicide. Rupa and Sanatan embraced Anupam and said, we just wanted to test how faithful you are, how, how much chastity you have to the lotus feet of Sri Ram. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu smiled and he said, yes, Anupam has reached the eternal abode of Sri Ram. And he tells Sri Pad Sanatan was funny. Even Murari Gupta is like this. Now at that point, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu looks to Sanatan Goswami and then he tells him, stay here with Haridas Thakur, chant the holy name and I will come personally to see you every day. Accept Jagannath through his prasad and staying here take darshan of the chakra of the temple of Lord Jagannath. And in this way, keep speaking, thinking and chanting the names of Krishna. As Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, while leaving, he puts his hand outstretched to catch the shoulder of Sanatan Goswami to pull him close and embrace. And by now, this has become a routine. Sripad Sanatan Goswami tries to push. He says, My Lord, please, please don't break my heart. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pulls. Embraces Sanatan Goswami. And again, the blood is all over his body. After Chaitanya Mahaprabhu leaves, Sri Pad Haridas Thakur looks at Sanatan Goswami and he says, Sanatan Goswami, how empowered are you? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wants to perform services in Vrindavan. He could have done it through anyone, but he's empowering you. He calls your body as his own. You are so exalted. I am useless. I don't know anything. I am not empowered in any way for any service. He didn't send me anywhere. I am simply good for nothing sitting here chanting the holy name. There is nothing I can do. Sri Pat Sanatan Goswami started glorifying Sri Pat Haridas Thakur. And he said, there are some people who preach very nicely, but they don't practice. And there are others who practice very nicely, but they don't preach. You are a classic example of preaching through your practice. 
And then he said, what is the summum bonum? What is this, the essence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's advent? He is the Yuga avatar to give the Yuga Dharma, which is chanting the names of Krishna. And whom is he empowering to chant the holy name? And he said, it's you. He could have called anyone as Nam Acharya, but he announces you as the whole and soul only proprietor Acharya, only authority for chanting the holy names. I am being kicked out, but you have been kept close here in Nilachala Dham just to chant the holy name and inspire others. So in this way, mutually they bow down and they embrace each other and they are glorifying. One day, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu invites Sripad Sanatana Goswami for prasadam in a place called as Yamala Gardens. And now Chaitanya Charitamrit describes the path to go there. The shorter one is through the Simhadwaram, closer. And the long route is by the sand of the beach, the ocean beach. It's the long route. And it's the tough one. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu invited Sanatana Goswami for prasadam for afternoon time. And this was in the month of May. And the sand would be blisteringly hot. But Sanatana Goswami thought to himself, I am not going to take the short route to the garden. He started walking all the way through the sand on the beach with his legs, his, the, the sole of his feet having boils and wounds and blisters and burns, jumping his way, long route, austerity. But he went that route. By then, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had finished his prasad and he was resting. So Govinda Das welcomed Sri Sanatan Goswami. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Govinda Das to give remnants from his plate. Shripad Sanatan Goswami, why did you take so long? You, you were expected, but I waited. But you didn't come, so I honored Prasadam. Why did you come so late? Shripad Sanatan Goswami said, because I had to, this is a long route and it was very hot. It took time. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, you could have taken the shorter path. Why did you walk the longer route? Shripad Sanatan Goswami said, in the shorter route, there are so many pujaris and priests of Jagannath who come out. And with all the sore and blood and my contaminated consciousness and sinful, contaminated, polluted, lowly self, if I touch them, they will become contaminated and they will go inside and commit seva parad, offense to Jagannath. Mm. So I'm sorry, my Lord, as austerity, as prayash chitta, I had to walk this way. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this, tears streamed down his eyes. And he said, Sanatan. Every time I meet you, your humility just melts my heart. At this point, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami makes a very beautiful statement. He says, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu empowered four of his assistants, near and dear devotees, associates, to exemplify four qualities. He said he empowered Ramananda Rai and taught this world through Ramananda Rai the quality of self-control. Srila Ramananda Rai would teach young girls how to sing and dance and sometimes he would have to touch them and sometimes not just young girls he had to touch grown up girls and teach them how to dance but he was so detached and materially <clears throat> so indifferent that Chaitanya, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami describes Ramananda Rai as an example of being in this world but not touched by this world. Complete self-control. Then the second quality of neutrality and adherence to the scriptures is exemplified by an associate called Damodar Pandit. Now Srila Damodar Pandit was so outright that he would chastise Vaishnava's left-right center when he saw they were deviating. Now, please don't use this as an example to quote. Damodar Pandit is Damodar Pandit. First, we have to become Pandit, then Damodar Pandit. He could even reprimand Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sometimes when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would externally seem as if he's 
overlooking some rules in the scripture, Damodar Pandit would get Chaitanya Mahaprabhu back out of affection. The third principle of forbearance and tolerance was taught in this world by Srila Haridas Thakur. And the quality of humility was taught by Srila Sanatana. It was time for Ratyata. Devotees came from different places and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with five mouths described the glorious qualities and humility of Sri Sanatana Goswami. In this purport, Srila Prabhupada explains, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was speaking about Sri Sanatana Goswami, all the devotees were jubilant. No one felt any sadness in their heart. Srila Prabhupada explains, a Vaishnav is he who is happy to see others getting the mercy of the Lord and at the same time is happy when others are glorified. But when others are put in prominent positions of attention and they are glorified, their qualities are noticed and glorified. And if our heart fades even a bit, then that is a symptom of envy. But when we can naturally, spontaneously join in the glorification of the good qualities of others, that is the opening blossoming of humility and non-enviousness in the heart. Now it is described in the Bhagavatam Dharma Projita Kaitavutra Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam that Srimad Bhagavatam can be relished by only those who are non-envious. Those who wish to become non-envious. <coughs> what does envy mean? Hmm? No, I didn't understand. Hmm. Oh, you're saying in Hindi, okay. So NV means NV, no vacancy in Goloka Vrindavan. <laughs> NV, no vacancy. When we cannot appreciate good qualities in others, it, it is not their good qualities. They're inheriting Krishna's good qualities. Somebody's a good singer, this is the quality of Sri Krishna. Somebody is a good dancer. This is a quality of Krishna. Somebody is a good speaker. This is a quality of Krishna. Somebody is a good manager. This is a quality of Krishna. Somebody is very intelligent. This is a quality of Krishna. Somebody is very beautiful. This is a quality of Krishna. Somebody has aristocratic birth. This is a quality of Krishna. Somebody has multiple skill set. This is the quality of Krishna. It is not them. Krishna is empowering. It's Krishna's quality. It's Krishna's current which is going through these jivas. So when we feel envious, we are not able to see Krishna's hand in it. We are seeing that person versus me. But when we see faults in ourselves, oh, that's our fault because of being bahirmukh, turning our face away from Krishna. And the faults of others, oh, that's insignificant. It's just superimposition of my faults. Only when our vision is clear can we see people as they are. But when our eyes are um, covered by the lens of our own faults, we superimpose our faults in everybody's personality. So it's possible that the faults that we see may not exist in their character. It's simply our bias. It's just our superimposition, the lens of our consciousness that we see. The Shastra describes when we find faults in others, 25% of their sin we take. And sometimes finding faults in others is a bigger fault than the fault itself. The fault that we're talking about is insignificant in comparison to the tendency to find faults. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur would say, there is so much false in the self, where is the time to look around? True Hari Bhajan doesn't start till the time we understand that we are filled, we are a garbage trash can filled with false. How many false do we see in ourselves? And how many do exist? How many actually exist in others and how much more we can see? So Prabhupada explains this in the purport, and it's a very deep point. Only non-envious people will have taste in Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, it's called Matsarya in Sanskrit. The word Matsarya has a root word, Matsya, which means a fish. And the fishy mentality 
as soon as there's too many babies, some fishes in the pond, or let's say in the lake, start thinking that as I get old, this fish will get strong and this fish will eat me. Better I devour this fish right now, a baby fish. So the fear that this fish will eat me in the future, a probabilistic fear, and out of which I definitely finish this person. This is called envy. Therefore, it's called matsari in Sanskrit. When we spit venom as a negative reciprocation to a probabilistic venom, which may or may not exist, so when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu glorified Sri Chaitanya uh, Sanatan Goswami, all the devotees, they were applauding. One day Sripad Sanatan Goswami spoke to Jagadananda Pandit and he spoke his heart. He said, I must tell you something that is bothering me. What is it? asked Jagadananda Pandit. Sripad Sanatan Goswami said, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu takes advantage. He gets me close, he pulls me and he embraces me and I see all the blood and the open sore and all the wounds being smeared on his body. I don't know what to do. Jagadananda Pandit said, why don't you go to Vrindavan? Leave Puri and go to Vrindavan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given you an instruction to go to Vrindavan. Why don't you just go? Sanatana Goswami said, good idea. Let me just give up the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I cannot see his golden, beautiful form being smeared by all this dirt from my body. Better I don't show my face. He went to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he said, I have decided to go to Vrindavan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Vrindavan? Why? How? When? Who told you? He said, Jagadananda Pandit. Now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became Narasimhadev. He was roaring. He said, you are worshipable for me. You are my guru. And who is this impudent, neophyte rascal, Jaga? Srila Sanatana Goswami said, my Lord, you treat me like an outsider by glorifying me. And you're proving your love for Jagadananda Pandit by... Criticizing him. You reprimand only those people who are close to you. And we glorify everyone in general who is an outsider. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, that's not the case. I'm speaking my heart to you. I don't want you to go. Who is this Jagadananda Pandit? What authority does he have to instruct you? You are the knower of the Vedas. You are the spiritual master of everyone in this world. That's how significantly pure you are. This Jagadananda, I have not even heard his name. <laughs> when we don't have Adhikar and we try to give our suggestions to senior Vaishnavas, this is what happens. <laughs> senior Vaishnavas out of their love may treat us as friends. But if we make the mistake of treating them as friends and giving our suggestions, we doom in spiritual life. Finished. They may have sakya towards us, but we want to have dasya. <coughs> we should know our limits. But Jagadananda Pandit was <laughs> sincerely trying to speak out. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, why do you want to go to Vrindavan? But Sanatana Goswami spoke his heart and he said, you are forcefully embracing me. You promised me you will not embrace me. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, that is not possible. I must embrace you. Sanatana Goswami said, please don't break my heart like this. This is why I want to go to Vrindavan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, now I will speak my heart to you. Why am I embracing you? Haridas and Sanatan, both of you are like babies for me. And I am like your mother. The, the blood and the pus oozing in your body represents the stool and urine of the baby. And the mother never rejects the child just because he passes urine. She gets the baby, she cleans the baby, and embraces the baby. Because she loves everything related to the baby, including the stool and the urine. Now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, the pus and the blood in your body is more fragrant for my nostrils 
then musk, chandan, sandalwood, camphor, saffron, and all the transcendental flowers put together. Your body is glorious for this and other. He said, Krishna is actually testing me through you. I am suppo- I'm a sannyasi. And if I discriminate, this is pure, this is impure, this is contaminated, and have uh, distinguishing nature in my, the Viveka Buddhi in my mind, to see different people differently, and different bodies differently on the material platform, then I fail the test. But I pass the test by seeing your body not different, with the pus and without the pus. Please note, Sanatan, when this blood touches my body, I become pure. Now I will give you my mercy again. In Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pulled Sanatan by the shoulder and Sripad Sanatan Goswami was lean and fragile. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Sanatan Goswami with tears. And when the tears of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu touched the body of Sripad Sanatan Goswami, all the blood and all the oozing pus got killed. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave Sanatan Goswami a very beautiful, exquisite, beautiful, wonderful, transcendental, golden complexion body. He said, because you purified me so much, I fulfill your desire. Now go to Vrindavan <laughs> and fulfill all that I want you to do. Sri Pat Sanatan Goswami left. Are, is everyone in the narration? Yes. Yes. This is Chaitanya Lila. For Kali Yuga Jeevas, we have no other hope than to hear about these personalities, associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> Apoorva Amrita Nadi Vahe Taramukhe. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Ramananda Rai. When Ramananda Rai was glorifying the devotees, Shaitanya Mahaprabhu said, don't stop, go on, go on, keep speaking. Apurva Amrita Nadi Vahe Taramukhe. Unprecedented ambrosial nectarian flow is emanating from your lotus mouth. Don't stop. In fact, it is also described by our Acharyas that when we speak about the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the probability of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu giving Prema Bhakti is more. We may speak about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exclusively, which is very nice. But when we discuss about his associates, Gauranga Mahaprabhu becomes eager to hear. So can we all continue? Am I disturbing your sleep? (laughs) You're not answering because you're asleep. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Now don't worry, Sri Sanatan Goswami is entering Vrindavan. Very soon he will find his Madan Gopal deity. Yes, Prabhu. Srila Sanatan Goswami took the notes of Balabhadra Bhattacharya who was the assistant of, assistant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the notes had the exact route that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took while he went to Vrindavan. And Chaitanya and Sripad Sanatana Goswami followed the, followed the same route and went to all the villages and sat in all the places. Srila Prabhupada, in that context, he writes, the places that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visits, places that he sits, the places that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu even stops, or even places that he just passes by are all eternally glorified. Our tongues are meant to remember Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Please don't have any doubt in your mind about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Our scriptures give more than 108 Vedic references on the identity of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. Kalo Prathama Sandhyayam Lakshmi Kanto Bhavishyati Daru Brahma Samipasta Sanyasi Gaura Vigraha. The Gaura Puran describes Krishna saying this Kalo Prathama Sandhyayam in the first portion of Kali Yuga Lakshmi Kanto Bhavishyati. 
I will appear as Lakshmi Kant, which means the husband of Lakshmi Priya Devi. And what will I do? Daru Brahma Samipa Stha. I will situate myself close to Daru Brahma, that is Jagannath Dev. Jagannath Puri. And Sanyasi Gaura Vigraha. I will take Sanyasi and I will have a golden form. Hmm. Even the Vishnu Sahasrana. Hmm. Suvarna Varna Hemanga Varanga Chandanangadi. Sanyasa Kritcha Mashanti Nishtha Shanti Parayana. Suvarna Varna Hemanga Varanga Chandanangadi. The Supreme Lord will have a golden form. Smeared with sandalwood pulp all over his body. Why sandalwood pulp? Oh, his body is burning in the heat of separation. So to pacify that heat of separation, there's sandalwood pulp all over his body. Nishta <clears throat> Shanti Parayana. He will take sannyas, will be peaceful, and he will give the process of eternal peace. So many beautiful references like this. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he passed through different places on his way to Vrindavan and Balabhatra Bhattacharya had this whole route written down. Sri Patsanatham Goswami followed the same place and reached the holy abode of Sri Brajadham. Now he met his brother Rupa Goswami there. <laughs> Rupa and Sanatham joined hands for this process of excavating and um, restoration, renovation of all the Leela Sthalis of Radha and Krishna. Now it was a very big, humongous task on their shoulders. Writing books, explaining everything, <coughs> getting deities, finding them. Now Rupa Goswami, he had fulfilled all the instructions that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave him. There was only one instruction he had not fulfilled and that is to find Govinda Dev. And he was crying. Now for us, if our spiritual master gives us 10 instructions and we finish the first one, we feel so proud about ourselves. And done. Rupa Goswami had finished nine and he was beating himself down. Why I couldn't finish the 10th? And you know the story of how he found Govindji. So anyway, this beautiful, wonderful task was being done by the Goswami. So Srila Sanatan Goswami went there. And anyone who visited Vrindavan and comes back to his village, the villagers would come together and ask that person, Did you see Rupa and Sanatan? Stita Pratnya Sikha Bhasha. How are they walking? How are they talking? What do they do? What do they wear? How do they glance? How do they chant? How do they sit? How do they stand? How much do they sleep? When you love someone, you want to know all angles about that person. Right? Every single detail. Every single thing. <clears throat> and if they tell you something, you preserve and keep that in your mind and heart forever. Because you love them so much. Shripad Ayendra Prabhu. He met Srila Prabhupada only once. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting. Srila Prabhupada was coming from his room down to take darshan of the deities. And Sripad Ayendra Prabhu was not into, you know, the forefront. He used to be the Kartal man behind it. <laughs> so that day there was no lead singer. So they pushed the Murdanga in his hand and said, sing the, the welcoming Kirtan as Prabhupada comes down to take darshan. And and Ayendra Prabhu describes, he didn't even know the Murdanga beats at that time. <laughs> it was like a typical dun 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 beat, the minimum beat. <clears throat> so he, he got the Murdanga and he was singing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. And all the devotees are chanting with Prabhupada. And at one point, Prabhupada just stops. And he looks at Ayindra Prabhu and he says, Jai. That's the only word they ever exchanged. Shripad Ayindra Prabhu kept it in his mind. And then with time to come, 
He was plucking out so many meanings out of it. What was that jai about? If I pick up my mridanga and I perform Harinam Sankirtan for Prabhupada's pleasure for 10 minutes and if he smiles and says jai, then it should be a jai eternally. I should eternally get a smile on Srila Prabhupada's face and that means I have to pick up the mridanga and continue chanting all through. And he started doing 16, 16 hours of street Harinam just to keep the jai going. So Sripad Ayendra Prabhu, the revolution that he did in Kirtan, sitting in that one square tile in Vrindavan, across ISKCON. Even now, when you go to ISKCON, the Vrindavan, the rickshaw, if you go to the rickshaw, uh, the, the, the cycle rickshaws and you tell them, I want to go, you know, to Krishna Balram Mandir, sometimes they ask you, where is it? But then you have to tell them, Angrezi Mandir. I say, okay, now we know where it is. And one rickshaw fellow even said the history of how it started. He said, in 1986, there used to be an Angrej sitting there and doing Kirtan. Shri Padayandra Prabhu. And all the Brajbasis would say, this is the Angreji Mandir. Because one Angrej sits there, one American sits there and does Kirtan. So even today, it's called, and then of course, many more Western devotees, Western body devotees joined in. So then it was called as the Angreji Mandir. So the point I'm making is, Shri Padayandra Prabhu could bring in a revolution in his con, by taking that one word of Srila Prabhupada to his heart. You heard of Pragosha Prabhu? Pragosha Prabhu had interactions with Srila Prabhupada and he always wanted to have personal time with Srila Prabhupada. So he went on a morning walk with Srila Prabhupada. And he was so fascinated to be with Srila Prabhupada. So he would walk and he wanted to walk very close to Srila Prabhupada to see how he places his lotus feet. And he says, Prabhupada had a very royal way of moving the cane. <laughs> and he said, everything was so beautiful. I don't know why, but I was getting attracted to this transcendental personality. So at one point he was walking so close to Srila Prabhupada that Prabhupada just stopped. So he was walking and he just stopped. He was not like a slow down. He just stopped. And Prabhupada, Prabhu, who was behind Srila Prabhupada, accidentally stepped on the heel of Srila Prabhupada. Like, you know, just very carefully touched and he, he realized. Prabhupada turned back. He took his cane and popped on the tummy of Prabhupada Prabhu and said, don't get too close to me. And then he was shocked. Prabhupada looked at him and smiled. <laughs> All the devotees are smiling. Now Prabhu says, with time, I have replayed this one sentence a zillion times in my mind. Don't get too close to me. Don't get too close to me. That's the only thing he told me. And with time, it's made so many meanings, which means don't take the spiritual master so cheaply. Um, don't think you can have my association so easily. So many things. Don't get too close to me, I'm like fire. Maintain a distance so that you feel the warmth. If you're very far away, you freeze. You come very close, you'll be burnt. So many meanings. So the point is, if you love someone, you love to have every aspect of that person permeating through your consciousness. When devotees went to Vrindavan, they would ask, Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami, what do they do? How do they look? How do they sit? How do they stand? How do they talk? How do they walk? Even if when they go to Madhukari, how do they ask? What is the words that they use? <laughs> so exciting. And then the devotees would tell them the, to the villagers, Rupa and Sanatan, they have given up. Na, Maharaj, or let's say Nawab Hussein Shah's opulence. Now they live under trees. They just wear a kopin. They keep chanting all day and night like intoxicated madmen, discussing and crying about Krishna. They are writing books. They keep wandering from one forest to another. They are so intelligent, but they are so humble and so gentle. They describe how Sripad Sanatan Goswami, when he would go from one village to another, he would make them cry. The village that he is leaving would cry in separation and the village that he is arriving would cry in happiness. And then he would stay there overnight and leave the next morning and the village that he is leaving would cry in separation and the village that he is arriving would cry in happiness. In this way, Sripad Sanatan Goswami's service was to make the Vaishnavas cry. <coughs> and then when he would go into the villages, he would ask them questions about their life. He would ask one Vaishnava, 
So, <clears throat> how many children do you have? He would ask another person. So, when are you getting married? He would ask the third person. How is your farming going? What are you having in your farm? He would ask the fourth, per fourth person, how many cows do you have? Do they give milk? He would ask the fifth person, what are your children studying? Are you happy? How is your bhajan going? Do you have proper food to eat? Where is your house? So he would ask all these general questions too. Very relatable. Sri Patsanathan Goswami as he lived in Vrindavan. In the forest of Mahavan, he took darshan of the deity called Madan Gopal. This was the deity of Sri Advaita Acharya, installed by Krishna's great grandson Vajranath. Now, this deity was being worshipped by Advaita Acharya at Advaita Bhatt, and Sri Pat Sanatan Goswami was completely mesmerized looking at the beauty of this deity. As he took darshan of this deity, his eyes went on to a certain boy who was less than 10 years old, playing in a very beautiful, attractive way with his friends, smiling and laughing and giggling. And Sripad Sanatan goes from his heart, was melting to see this child. Believe it or not, all day from sunrise to sunset, he sat there looking at this child. And he thought to himself, this is not possible. For a renunciant to be attracted to a child like this all day, it's not proper. So he thought there is something mysterious about this child. This child had a complexion of bluish black rain cloud. And he was wearing a yellow dhoti. He had lots of soft black curly hair. And he had lotus petal like eyes. He was walking around and playing and running and giggling and smiling and looking at Shripad Sanatan Goswami. Shripad Sanatan Goswami thought at sun, sunset, all the boys are going to go home. I am going to follow this boy to his house. And he followed this boy and this boy entered the temple of Madan Gopal. And the door shut. Now he opened the door and there was no child and there was only a deity. And he realized, Krishna, you have been playing all day. I wish I could have you in my life. That night, Madan Gopal appeared in the dream. I'm sorry to say this word again and again. I feel like saying Madan Gopal Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's heartbreaking for me because every time I'm saying it, I feel like saying Madan Gopal Prabhu. Because he's sitting here. And to say just the word, it's, it's very difficult for me. <laughs> So, Sri Madan Gopal <laughs> came in the dream of Sri Patsanathan Goswami and said, I really wish to come to you. Can you take charge of my worship? And I, I'm very hungry and thirsty and greedy to have your devotional service accepted. And at the same time, he appeared in the dream of Purushottam Chobe who was the disciple of Sripad Advaita Acharya and said, hand over my worship to Sripad Sanatan Goswami. I want to accept his service. Sripad Sanatan Goswami accepted this deity and renamed him as Radha Madan Mohan. Now I'm safe. <laughs> the name has changed. <laughs> There's no Madan Mohan Prabhu here, right? Okay, so I can say Madan Mohan. So he accepted and placed Madan Mohan at Dwadasha Aditya Tila. Now Dwadasha Aditya Til, for those who have gone for Vajmandal Parikrama on the banks of Yamuna, is a very historic place. When Krishna bathed in the Yamuna and he Kasyanu Bhavo Syanadeva Vidmahe Tavangri Renur Sparashadikara when he danced on the lotus head of Kaliya, lotus because it was touched by the lotus feet of Krishna and smeared and distributed profusely the signs and symbols of his lotus feet. After that, after banishing Kaliya out, ousting him out, after performing this beautiful, wonderful pastime, Krishna came out shivering because of the cold of the water of Yamuna. Oh, 
all the Prajabasis were like, oh, Krishna is shivering, what to do? Krishna looked at Surya Deva. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> now looking at Krishna's glance, Surya Deva took 12 forms. <laughs> Oh, Krishna, there are 10 directions, but I'm taking 12 forms. Let me enter all 12 Rashis at the same time. And to 12 sons, he was trying to dry Krishna's body. And immediately Krishna walked out. And he was, there's no water. So this was the source of the heating system in Minnesota. <laughs> when the coal comes in and the heater switches on, we remember Dwada Shaditya. How Krishna, when he felt cold, Surya Dev manifested so many forms. So next time when you see a heater, remember Dwada Shaditya. Whenever you feel cold and you want to warm yourself down, the source of this pastime is Krishna. Srila Prabhupada taught us to be like this. In every experience in life to see Krishna's hand. When Srila Prabhupada was invited in the initial days for a program, they asked Srila Prabhupada to sit on the floor and give class. No cloth, no mat, and forget of Yasasam. Srila Prabhupada was sitting on the ground and speaking. And later, after a few months, when the devotee realized, he told Srila Prabhupada, I am extremely sorry, you didn't even speak a word and tell me that this was wrong. Srila mm -hmm. Prabhupada said, every time there is a Vyasasam separating me, but this time I had the supreme fortune of sitting on the lap of my mother, Bhumi Devi. Mm. But he said, but don't follow this tradition again. <laughs> <laughs> At another time, Srila Prabhupada <clears throat> was going for a program and it was very cold and the personal servant forgot the jacket. And Srila Prabhupada was shivering. He said, Prabhupada, we are really sorry that we forgot the jacket. Srila Prabhupada said, I am being embraced by the cold breeze of Krishna's body. So in this way, seeing Krishna at all times, even when Srila Prabhupada would see an air hostess and would see the beauty of an air hostess, one brahmacharya was so enamored by the beauty of an air hostess that he was looking at the air hostess continuously. <laughs> <laughs> they were supposed to receive Prabhupada. <coughs> And the air hostess started walking down first. And he was looking at the air hostess, looking at the air hostess, looking at the air hostess, looking at the air hostess. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. And he turned. Prabhupada was standing here. <laughs> and Prabhupada looks at the Brahmachari and says, So? <laughs> she is beautiful. <laughs> now, what does he say? You cannot lie to the spiritual master and you cannot say a yes. He said, <laughs> Prabhupada said, I understand. <laughs> Prabhupada said, if the spark is so beautiful, what to speak of the source? Mama Tejamsha Sambhava. So every time we see beautiful things in this world, wonderful things in this world, creative things in this world, attractive things in this world, empowered things in this world, it's just a reminder to see the spark is sparkling so much. What to speak of the soul, Shri Krishna? It's all about the vision. Prabhupada wanted us to have Krishna consciousness. The consciousness to see Krishna everywhere. So Sripad Sanatan Goswami, <coughs> he established Madan Mohan Dev at Dwadasha Aditya Tila. Dwadasha means 12, Aditya means sun, and Tila means mountain. But he was feeling very miserable because he would go for madhukari and all that. He would get his some brachki roti and sometimes some spice, sometimes some salt, sometimes some water from Yamuna. That's all. It's very difficult. And he was thinking miserable that Radha Madan Mohan has come to me and I have no time to serve them. I have nothing to serve them. So he would give whatever and he would pray to Krishna. But just accept whatever I'm giving you. One day Madan Mohan spoke to Sanatan Goswami and said, I am, I'm accepting whatever you're giving me. At least put a little salt. <laughs> <laughs> little deshka namak. With salt. Little taste. 
taste will be enhanced. Sanatana Goswami got furious. He said, today you're asking for salt. Tomorrow you'll ask for sugar. Then you will say sweet rice. What do you think I'm doing here? Do I have a factory of my own? I am a Babaji. Where will I go? Whatever I'm giving you, just accept. Or if you want salt, you give me salt. I will give it back to you. You make arrangement. So Krishna thought of making arrangement. Krishna Das Kapoor. He was from Bhutan, present day Punjab. And he was getting a boat full of jewels to Agra. And mysteriously, that boat got stuck in the Yamuna. And he was crying for help now because if the boat sinks, he loses all his jewels. And if he's stuck there, and if he doesn't sink, people can come and just take it away. It's, it's at stake. So he was crying for help. Someone help me. I'm ready to share my property with you. Please help me. One very beautiful, attractive boy came there. Sri Madan Mohan. And told Kapoorji, there is a very strong Baba there. His name is Sanatan Goswami. He can pull your boat out. But offer him all the jewels that you have. Kapoorji said, I am ready to give 50% of my jewels. <laughs> yes, I will go and tell the Baba to be here. So this boy goes and says, Baba, there is someone stuck here. Sanatan Goswami comes down. By then, this boy is already pulled out. Now, Sanatan Goswami is pretty fragile. What is he going to do? Hmm. So the boy pulls out. Sanatan Goswami comes out and he gets the credit. Hmm. Kapoorji says, I am really thankful to your assistant who came and did it. I want to share all these jewels with you. Sanatan Goswami said, I don't need any jewels. What will I do with jewels? Do you have salt by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> Kapoorji says, it is filled with salt. Yeah. I have two, three bags of salt. Take it. Yeah. Sanatan Goswami said, that I will need. Because I have someone who loves salt. <laughs> and at the same time, I don't need these jewels. But Radha Madan Mohan have to have a good place. If you can contribute in making the temple for Radha Madan Mohan, I will be very grateful. It was Kapoorji who constructed a very beautiful temple for Radha Madan Mohan, which was the first ever temple in Vrindavan. Yeah. Even now, that temple is a sign and symbol of Vrindavan. Now, as, yes. No, it's the most iconic temple. Yes, iconic. Have you seen the picture of Srila Prabhupada there yeah. with that uh, Vishakha Mataji's book? Yeah. The front cover is Prabhupada walking with his servants with Radha Madan Mohan. That's so beautiful. <coughs> Very iconic. Yes. So now this is going on in Vrindavan. What is happening in Jagannath Puri? Jagadananda Pandit and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are having quarrels one after another. <laughs> now you may ask why. Jagdananda Pandit, according to Gaur Ganadesh Deepika, is Satya Bhama Devi. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna and Vrindavan. So there's quarreling going on. Jagadananda Pandit is serving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Dwarkadish Krishna, is getting opulent, fragrant oils for massage. Very nice silken bed and comfortable place to sit in. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, I'm an Anansian, I don't need all this. Chaitanya Pandit says, my offerings are being rejected. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, yes, you have to be under Sanatana Goswami. Chaitanya Pandit says, so may I go to Vrindavan? Yes, you can go, but I have a few conditions. The condition is, you shouldn't stay there long because you'll commit aparad. So this is a very beautiful point. Mm. If we are intense, then Vrindavan will just accelerate our path back home back to God. But if we get our mundane materialistic outlook to Vrindavan, that is not good. Srila Prabhupada, in a, in a letter, he said that if we commit offense to Vrindavan, then we have to be born as monkeys and hogs in Vrindavan. Mm. And then he continued in the letter by saying, but by eating the dust of Vrindavan, those monkeys and hawks get liberated eventually. 
So disciples of Prabhupada were confused. They asked Prabhupada, isn't this wonderful? <laughs> then you go to Vrindavan, you commit aparad, then you become a monkey there, you eat the dust and go to back home back to God and in two lifetimes. Isn't that wonderful? Prabhupada looked back and said, when I have given you a process where you can go in one lifetime, why take the second? Mm. <laughs> Prabhupada had a fitting reply for everything. So amazing. One place Srila Prabhupada is talking about seeing Krishna. Krishna as the deity. Krishna is appearing mercifully as the deity. And one hippie, he got up and he said, Swamiji, can you see God? And Prabhupada was sitting in front of the deity. He said, please sit down. You're coming in the middle. <laughs> if you sit down, I can see him. You know, a reporter with the, the, the flat earth philosophy came to Srila Prabhupada and said, oh, with the, with the um, spherical um, Bhugol philosophy came to Srila Prabhupada and said, I have heard you are saying that the earth is flat. And Prabhupada realized that she was very argumentative. Prabhupada looked at her and very quickly said, yes, how can you prove it? Prabhupada said, wherever I step, it's flat. <laughs> <laughs> Has wonderful replies like this. One disciple told Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, I want to sit at your lotus feet. Srila Prabhupada said, that's impossible because they're always moving. <laughs> so you cannot sit at my lotus feet. One reporter asked Srila Prabhupada, <coughs> can you tell me about yourself? Srila Prabhupada said, why should I tell you? <laughs> I don't want to tell you. <laughs> now this is how our interview begins. <laughs> I don't want to tell you. <laughs> and it was Rameshwar Maharaj who had arranged this interview. He <laughs> said, come Swamiji gives very good answers. <laughs> <laughs> so the reporter says, something. Prabhupada said, nothing. <laughs> You can tell me if you wish. Prabhupada said, why should I wish? <laughs> I don't want to wish. So she thought of changing subject matters. And she said, Swamiji, how do you get the money? Prabhupada said, Krishna gives. She said, who is Krishna? And where does he live? Prabhupada said, he is God. He gives me like this. The reporter said, yes, but... He would give it through someone. Prabhupada said, I am telling you, Krishna gives. Then she thought, so how do you make the temples? Prabhupada said, Krishna provides. So how do you write the books? Prabhupada said, Krishna writes. So how do you preach in this old age? Prabhupada said, Krishna preaches. <laughs> now the reporter thought even that route is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> then she again started asking, but these books that you are writing, can you tell me something about the author uh, that is yourself? I don't want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so now she understood, now this is impossible. <laughs> so Rameshwar Maharaj came and whispered in Prabhupada's ears. Prabhupada, they want to know about the author so that the book can get publicity and then people will read your books and then they will become Krishna conscious. Prabhupada said, ah, <laughs> <laughs> then you write about me, then I will tell you. And then he went on for 15 minutes speaking about it. So anyway, <coughs> it's kind of exciting. When uh, transcendence touches the plane of mundane materialism, what is seen is magic. In our interactions, we don't see all this. But when pure Vaishnavas touch the plane of mortal beings, there's magic seen. So anyway, coming back to our love quarrels between Jagadananda Pandit and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Jagadananda Pandit, you should go to Vrindavan but not stay too long there. You should come quick and don't go with anyone. Go alone and stay there under the shelter of Sanatan Goswami, not with anyone else. You will take the Brajvasis cheaply. They have a spontaneous mood. You will commit a parad. And then as you go, 
tell Sri Sri Sanatan Goswami, very soon I am coming, let him make arrangements for my stay. Is everyone listening? Yes. 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 Then Jagadananda Pandit walked and he came to Vrindavan. Sri Sanatan Goswami took him around to the 12 forests of Vrindavan. Gave him comfortable stay. He would do Madhukari, but he would make sure that the prasadam for um, Jagadananda Pandit is properly arranged. <coughs> he told Srila Sanatana Goswami, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is going to come soon. Please make arrangements. Sanatana Goswami said yes. And every day he would await Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's arrival. He made Dwada Shaditya Tila, Tila there, very wonderful place, sitting place for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Day one, day two, day three, day four, Mahaprabhu is not coming. And there's no, you know, letter also comes late and you reply and you go back by then it's two months. You don't get instant text. So there's nothing like that. So you, you don't know when Mahaprabhu is coming. It was two months that Jagadananda Pandit lived and Mahaprabhu didn't come yet. So he thought of leaving. Sri Sanatan Goswami gave four gifts to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through Jagadananda Pandit. He gave the gift of the dust of Vrindavan from the Rasasthali, where Rasalila takes place. He gave a Govardhan Shila, he gave a Gunjamala, and he gave some fruits, the Pilu fruits. Jagadananda Pandit got these items. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very happy. He accepted them. He distributed the fruits and kept the first three items with himself. Now, Jagadananda Pandit is gone. Mahaprabhu is not coming. Sanatan Goswami's eagerness in his heart increased day by day by day. When is Mahaprabhu coming? And one night as he went off to sleep, Gauranga Mahaprabhu appeared in his dream. And in the dream, he came to Dwada Shaditya Til and sat in that place and told Sripad Sanatan Goswami, the place is very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Sripad Sanatan Goswami woke up and understood that Gauranga Mahaprabhu doesn't have to actually come and accept. He's already accepted the service. Mm -hmm. Now Sanatan Goswami continued living in Vrindavan. He would do Giriraj Parikrama every day. He would walk more than 40 kilometers, 50 kilometers at the age of 90. Every single day. And one day Sri Krishna appeared to him, took a rock of Giriraj, placed his lotus feet and said, this impression on this Govardhan rock is all that you have to circumambulate. Please don't break your body down to pieces like this by walking. You don't have to take this strenuous effort. I accept your service just by your circumambulation of this rock. Sri Patsanathan Goswami agreed. That rock today is found at Radha Damodar Temple. Anyone who walks around that place four times, seven times, eleven times gets the benefit of Kiriraj Parikrama. Sri Patsanathan Goswami would also spend time in Nandagram on the banks of Pavan Sarovar. And he would live in isolation for days, weeks. No one would know where he is. He's writing and meditating and crying. No eating, no sleeping, no drinking. Just sitting there and crying in isolation. And he would sleep on the floor. One young boy appeared and he got a pot of milk. And he told Sri Sanatan Goswami, why are you breaking the heart of the Brajbasis like this? I am from this village. From underground. And all the Brajvasis have told me their heart is breaking to pieces when they see you sleep on the floor like this. Please accept a bhajan kuti for yourself. I have got this pot of milk. Please drink this milk. This is from the cows that I have personally milked. Drink this milk. Get energy and make the bhajan kuti. I will come back to take the pot. Sri Sanatan Goswami started drinking the milk. And he fell down intoxicated. <laughs> he was horripilating with hair standing on end, perspiring, throat, throat choking and teeth chattering and tears streaming down his eyes. He was shivering and his complexion went pale, understanding that boy was no one except his own mother Mohan who had come. No one else. His own mother Mohan walked all the way to the ground. Sri Sanatan Goswami made a bhajan kuti there. Now, even now, when you go to the banks of Pavan Sarovar, you have the place of bhajan of Sri Sanatan Goswami. 
It's interesting. At that time, Rupa Goswami was also in Nandaka, very close to Pavan Sarovar. He was in a place called Terkadam, which is near Vindakund and Gupta Kund. Sri Rupa Goswami was writing his works there. So one day he thought of visiting his Gurudev, Srila Sanatana Goswami. So he walked all the way. But then he thought, I should not come empty handed like this, I should have got something. Now what to do? He kept chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram, Ram Hare Hare. And as he was calling out desperately for ingredients because he didn't know what to do, <laughs> one very beautiful golden complexion Kishori Gopi came there and she gave ingredients to Rupa Goswami. She gave milk, she gave sugar, she gave camphor, she gave saffron, she gave rice. And she said, you can make nice sweet preparation out of this. Rupa Goswami said, I have no time. I am Babaji, I am doing bhajan, where will I have time? She said, don't worry, you continue your bhajan, I will make it for you. And she cooked such sweet, wonderful sweet rice. And she gave it to Rupa Goswami and said, you offer this to your Gurudev. Rupa Goswami got it and gave it to Sripad Sanatan Goswami. Sripad Sanatan Goswami had tasted Krishna's mm. milk pot. So he knows. So he took the sweet rice. With hand trembling, he tasted. And he asked Rupa Goswami, you made this? <laughs> Did you make this sweet rice? He said, no. <laughs> I was waiting for the ingredients and one very beautiful Kishori Gopi, she came and she made this. So Nathan Goswami put the pot aside and said, can you describe her? And Rupa Goswami started describing how she was 14 years old. And how Tatta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Prushabhanu Sute Devi Pranamani Hari Kiri. Sanatana Goswami said, Rupa, you have the audacity of taking service from our Supreme uh, Master, Srimati Radharani, the person who gives us shelter, you are putting her to your service? Rupa Goswami didn't have any. <laughs> he looked at Shripad Sanatan Goswami. Shripad Sanatan Goswami said, Okay, you take this sweet rice. And first of all, you taste it. And then Rupa Goswami is tasting, and then Sanatan Goswami chastises, and then he takes the pot, and then he's tasting. <laughs> and then he continues chastising, then he gives it to Rupa Goswami. Now, this is the nature of divine love. It is called Visha Amrita Milan. It is like Vish, it is like poison. Because it permeates through the body. You can accept it. But it's nectar. You can give it up. It's like trying to drink hot sugar cane juice. What happens when you drink hot sugar cane juice? Yes, assembly in Tobacco is come. What happens when we have to drink hot sugar cane juice? <laughs> too hot to drink and too sweet to stop. Yes. Too hot to drink and too sweet to stop. Mm -hmm. This is Prima. Mm -hmm. So it was difficult for them to say, you took service from Radharani, so let's stop. No, but they can't because this is nectarian. And the more they take it, the more they born in repentance that you're making Radharani make this. So we shouldn't accept. But it's so good, you have to accept. <laughs> but now I've been accepting. How can you make Radharani make <laughs> such a preparation? So in this way, there was ecstatic burst between the two brothers. Now Sripad Sanatan Goswami's pastimes continue for maybe another hour, but I am not going to push you there. Maybe last few minutes. There's so much that we can discuss. <coughs> but Sanatan Goswami's life is like an ocean and we can only accept drops. How much can we discuss? As a sparrow, how much can I fly and try to cover the sky? As a fish, how much can I try to swim and touch the depth of the Pacific Ocean? The Pacific Ocean is actually an insignificant example in comparison to Sripad Sanatan Goswami's glories. 
whom Chaitanya Mahaprabhu loved so much. Now, there was a <coughs> Brahmana who was poor and he prayed to Lord Shiva for wealth. So Lord Shiva said, you go to Sanatan Goswami. He has a lot of wealth. <laughs> you go to him. He's the wealthiest person around. So this Brahmana thought, you know, he's, he's certainly like a, a, a big person. So he went there and here is a Babaji sitting. He said, Lord Shiva told me that he... <laughs> I went to Lord Shiva asking for wealth. He said, go to Sanatan Goswami. He has a touchstone. And you touch that touchstone to iron and mysteriously turns it into gold. So, but are you the person? He said, yes, I am the person. Lord Shiva's you know, statement is correct. I am that rich person. So where is the touchstone? He said, it's there. Where? There. Where? In the trash can. In the dustbin. Dustbin? Yes, I keep it there. <laughs> if you want, you can take it. It's there. Take it. So he went, he searched, and he got it. He came back to Shripad Sanatan Goswami. Then he looked at Shripad Sanatan Goswami. He said, as far as I have learned logic, you can give up something inferior as an argument only if you have a better argument. And you throw this touchstone in a dumpster, which means you have a better touchstone. <laughs> but Sanatana Goswami said, yes, that is correct. I want it. Well, I can give it to you, but the condition is you have to throw this back into the dustbin. That is needed. You can keep both. By rejecting this, you are showing enough faith. That you can put in to get my touchstone. He went and threw it and came back to Sripad Sanatan Goswami. And Sripad Sanatan Goswami gave him the touchstone of the holy name of Krishna. Madhura Madhuram Etan Mangalam Mangalanam Sakala Nigama Valli Sat Falam Chit Swarupam Sakrit Api Parigitam Shraddhaya Helayava Bhriguvara nara matram tarayet krishna nama. Jayati jayati nama ananda rupam murare viramita nija dharma dhyana pujadi yatnam. Kathama pi sakrit attam muktinam praninam yat paramam amritam ekam jivanam bhushanam me. This was what Sanatana Goswami told the Brahmana. He said, Jayati Jayati Nama Ananda Rupam Murare. I bow down to the touchstone that I have, the holy name of Krishna. Why? Viramita. In Hindi, Virama means to put a full stop. Viramita. This puts a full stop to what? Nija Dharma Dhyana Puja Adi Yatnam. It puts a full stop to the, all the hard work that one has to put in all other practices. Because by chanting the holy name, that is the greatest. You don't have to perform any dharma, any karma, any vrata, any tapa, any tyaga, any vrata, and nothing. This holy name is everything. Na nama sadrusham jnanam, na nama sadrusham vratam, na nama sadrusham dhyanam, na nama sadrusham. Everything. Na nama sadrusham. There is nothing equal to the holy name. Namaiva karanam jantor, namaiva prahurevacha, namaiva paramaradhyo, namaiva paramaguru, namaiva paramashanti, namaiva paramastiti, namaiva paramagati, namaiva paramapriti. The holy name of Krishna is everything Rupa Goswami started explaining. As soon as one starts chanting the holy name, it puts a full stop to all other processes. And therefore he said, Paramam Amritam Ekam. This is the greatest source of nectar and Jeevanam Bhushanam Me. Like you have a bracelet which is a Bhushana for the hand, a necklace which is a Bhushana for the neck, you know, ankle bells which are, you know, Bhushana for the feet. But Jeevanam Bhushanam Me. The ornament of my life air is the chanting of the holy name, Sri Patsanatham Goswami. Srila Rupa Goswami also says something interesting. Do you want to hear? Yeah. 
In his Namashtakam, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad says, very beautiful thing. He says the four Vedas are standing in four sides. Atharva Veda, Sama Veda, Rig Veda, Yajur Veda. Personifications, four Vedas, all the Sanskrit verses are standing. And what are they doing? They have a ghee lamp in their hand. Called as the Upanishads. And the ghee lamp has fire in the form of verses. So the four Vedas are standing in four different sides with a ghee lamp called the Upanishads with fire sparks in the form of Vedic verses of the Upanishads. And with that, they perform eternal Arati for the light coming from the tip of the toenail of Harina. <laughs> Did anyone understand? No? One last time. The four Vedas are standing in four different directions and they are having a ghee lamp in their hand called the Upanishads. And the Upanishads are having fire there on the ghee lamp called as the verses. And through these verses of the Upanishad like ghee lamp, the personified Vedas in four different directions are eternally worshipping the radiance, the effulgence coming from the tip of the toenail of the lotus feet of Harinam. Now did anyone understand? Yes. Which basically means Vede, Ramayane, Chaiva, Purane, Bharate, Tatha, Adav, Ante, Cha, Madhye, Cha, Hari, Sarvatra, Giyate. That in the beginning, middle and end of the four Vedas, Upanishads, Puranas, Itihasas, Aranyakas, Samhitas, only Harinam is described. If you take shelter, exclusive shelter of Harinam, oh, then everything is cut. Sanatana Goswami convinced that person about the touchstone and then gave him Diksha also. As we wrap up, I want to tell you one last story. And then this will be the conclusion of the six part seminar. Is that okay? One last story? Yes. Uttishto Uttishta Govinda Uttishta Garudatvaja Uttishta Kamala Kanta Trailokyam Mangalam Kuru. Come on, waking up. <laughs> Srila <laughs> 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 Sanatan Goswami <clears throat> lived in Vrindavan and also has a bhajan kutir at Govardhan at Chakratirtha. Now during the Govardhan Leela pastime, when Krishna lifted Giriraj, under Giriraj Govardhan there was party going on. Indra's associates were sent down by Indra to see what was happening. They, they saw and they didn't find anyone. They told Indra, you're successful. Everyone's destroyed, everyone is killed, and now we are, we are successful. Indra said, don't take Krishna for granted. Just go once more and check. So they went down, checked everywhere, and then the only place left for check was under the hill. So they looked under the hill. They came and told Indra, they are having a party down there. <laughs> they are happier now than before. Can we also join? <laughs> and underneath Giriraj had made jewel staircase and swimming pools and chests and, and foods and so many things it's described. The Acharyas described. So under the hill they were having a party. But the only thing was the temperature was too low. Because of the water hitting Giriraj and falling off, they were feeling very cold. Krishna ordered Sudarshan Chakra from Vaikuntha and told him, you have to circumambulate Giriraj at this speed that the frictional speed of your circumambulation should give heat to the Brittvasis. So Sudarshan came and he said, and now everyone was feeling like 
Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> it's pretty hot. Krishna, I think this is enough. Krishna told Sudarshan, okay, you did a good job. Go back to Vaikuntha. He said, what? <laughs> Vaikuntha, Janita, Vara, Madhupuri, Tatra, Pira, Sotsava. You call me from Vaikuntha to Vrindavan for service and I do a good job. And then you demote me down to Vaikuntha. Krishna, please. I'm done getting Parikrama. I want to live in Vrindavan. Krishna said, okay, Chala, you stay in Vrindavan. So the place where Sudarshan Chakra was given place is called Chakra Tirtha. Shripad Sanatan Goswami lived there and he started chanting the holy name. And we know Lord Shiva is intoxicated hearing Ram Nam. Wherever there is Ram Nam, he loves that place. The whole family chants Ram Nam. Lord Shiva chants Ram Nam. Mother Parvati chants Ram Nam. Lord Ganesh chants Ram Nam. Kartikeya chants Ram Nam. And therefore there is peace at home. Everyone is chanting. No one has any time to talk to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> All are walking with their bid bag. <laughs> now, if you now you're laughing, I'll give you a proof. I will really give you a very hilarious proof. What is Lord Shiva's Vahan? Nandi, which is what animal? Bull. What is Mother Parvati's Vahan? Lion or tiger, right? And what is the relation between lion and bull? Mahaprasade Govind. <laughs> but he never eats. Pacha. Now, what is there on Lord Shiva's neck? Snake. Snake. What is the Vahan of Ganesh? Mouse. Mouse. Mahaprasade Govind. <laughs> but he never eats. Now, what is here around Lord Shiva's neck? Snake. What is the Vahan of Kartikeya? Pika. 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 Mahaprasade Govind. So the peacock can eat the snake and the snake can eat the mouse and the lion or the tiger can eat the bull and there could be total chaos in this family actually. They have all the reasons to have chaos. But it's interesting, all the animals are alive because everyone is busy chanting Ram. So which means in our family, even if we have the biggest reasons to fight amidst one another, if we are all absorbed chanting the holy name, then we are all united. Not just in our house, even in our community, if everyone prioritizes hearing and chanting Krishna now, then we are all united. The problem is when we take Krishna out of the center, then everyone wants to be in the center. <coughs> when you take Krishna out of the center, the center is free. Now there is a fight on who has to go there. The, the most hilarious thing is everyone starts describing a circle around them. I am the center, you are the center. Then the, the circles have a destructive interference with multiple centers. Now that is the problem. But when Krishna is the center, we all move constructively as ripples. So anyway, Lord Shiva, so you, did you like how Lord Shiva maintains domestic peace? <laughs> so therefore Prabhupada said, chant and be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Sit at home and chant Harinam and there is no problem. So Lord Shiva, he came to Chakra Tirtha. Hearing the Ram Nam, the chanting Harinam of Sanatan Goswami. And Sanatan Goswami would sit at Chakra Tirtha and chant Harinam. Lord Shiva would come there. But unfortunately what happened, one day Sanatan Goswami left that place. Lord Shiva came in his dream and said, I left my wife to come and hear your Harinam. I left Kailas and you left me. Sanatana Goswami said, yeah, I was sitting there, but there are too many mosquitoes. And they were all, you know, the Prabhuji is literally scratching even here, right? <laughs> as soon as I said Prabhuji is like... <laughs> this is how we hear Harikatha. We sit there in Chakra Tirtha for our years. <laughs> so Sanatana Goswami said, you know, there's too many mosquitoes there. Lord Shiva said, don't worry, I'll go to the demigod in charge of mosquitoes. And I will tell him, there should be no mosquitoes. There. Yeah, that's fine. Just, just take it as a joke. They're literally analyzing. Demigod. Imagine how he would sing. They're hearing with so much sincerity. You're having hair standing on end? <laughs> <laughs> the mosquito bite, okay. I was, I was thinking like, you know, she's showing how hair is standing on end. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So then Lord Shiva said, you don't worry, I will do something. You come back. Lord San uh, Shiva Sanatana Goswami came back and mysteriously all the mosquitoes disappeared. Yeah. Lord Shiva settled there at Chakra Tirtha hearing the holy name, chanting of Sanatana Goswami. And therefore he is called Chakreshwar Mahadev. Yeah. But you know how the Vajvasis are. Chakreshwar Mahadev, Chakreshwar, 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 over time has become Chakleshwar. <laughs> you know, first time when I went to Chak uh, Chakreshwar Mahadev, I didn't know where he was. So I asked one Baba, Chakreshwar Mahadev, Chakreshwar Mahadev, Koon Chakachak Baba? Aage se right there. Chakachak Baba, I never heard this. And Brajwasi literally was calling Mahadev as Chakachak Baba. He said, Chakachak Baba, Aage se right. Nahi, Chakachak Baba to nahi. When I went ahead, I realized that Brajwasi said, Chakachak Baba. Haan, yahi hai, inni ko kehte hai Brajwasi. Aap to bahar kyo, aap ko to nahi pata, aap to Brajwasi Brahman hai, aap to yahi kya hai. Aap to inko aise hi kya hai, Chakachak Baba kya hai. आप जैसे ठीक समझ दर्शन भी करके आ रहे हो थोड़ा ब्राह्मण को दक्षिण दे दो ऐसा नहीं होता ब्रज में ऐसा नहीं आया करते होंगे तुम दिल्ली वाले मुंबई वाले ब्रजवासी ब्राह्मण को दान दक्षिण दे दो ऐसा नहीं होता सो देन बाय द मर्सी ऑफ ब्रजवासी एंड श्रीपाद सनातन गोस्वामी सो चक्रेश्वर महादेव सो इन दिस वे श्रीपाद सनातन गोस्वामी इज अ uh, central figure in Vrindavan. Every Brajvasi considered Sanatana Goswami to, his, to be his Guru Dev. And interestingly, his Tithi also falls on Guru Purnima, the first day of Chaturmasya. Srila Sanatana Goswami <coughs> is Lavanga Manjari in the spiritual world, also referred to as Rati Manjari. We dedicate this whole session of the Lotus Feet of Sripatana. As I say this, I feel very sad that we will not be sitting here again tomorrow night. I wish we had seven ghost for us every now. Srila <laughs> Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, Srila Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Srila Jeeva Goswami, Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Sanatan Goswami are the six life heirs of the Gaudiya Sampradaya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gaurachandra is the moon for the dark sky of Kali and these six rays are the moon beams of mercy. As I say this, I really want to express my sincere heartfelt gratitude to this congregation of Tawako for coming in for six days and listening to Harikatha. His Grace Neelamani Prabhu, Her Grace Radharani Mataji, Shamkun Prabhu, Mataji, Ananda Rupa Mataji, Madan Gopal Prabhu, Mansikanga Mataji, and so many wonderful Vaishnavas sitting here. If not for all of you, we wouldn't have been able to do this. I want to bow down to all the devotees who cooked every evening for these sessions. The simplest thing to do is sit and speak here. But to arrange, to put the word out, to discuss the topics, to, to invite the devotees, to sponsor the prasad, to cook and feed devotees every single evening and driving from work, having kids, you know, for us, we don't have family, job, and kids, and wife, and house. It's easiest. We're like homeless beggars, we're just walking. For all of you with responsibility, having a full-time job, getting late here, then going home, taking care of your kids, and working, and next evening again, coming back six days, one after another, for each session spanning over two hours, two and a half hours, it's not easy. Really not easy. And if not for all of you coming here in such big numbers, I don't think we will be motivated enough to speak. I don't have so much taste. But when we see devotees sitting and hearing with rapt attention, now I have to serve all of you. Therefore, I'm trying to do my best. Whatever I have spoken, I have heard from the lips of our Guru Parampara. 
Srila Prabhupada's books, Srila Prabhupada's disciples, every single thing. Otherwise, I have no access to the six Goswamis. Srila Prabhupada says the only way we can understand Radha and Krishna in truth is by taking shelter of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. What hope do we have? We are saying, I want to be Krishna conscious, but we cannot get Krishna without Radharani. We cannot get Radharani without Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We cannot get Chaitanya Mahaprabhu without Nityananda Prabhu. We cannot get Nityananda Prabhu without the six Goswamis. We cannot get six Goswamis without Srila Prabhupada. So it's getting impossible. For us who have no hope, Guru Parampara is the only shelter. All the Goswamis told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would say, you have Krishna's Kripa, they would say, I don't know who Krishna is. Krishna say, Tumar Krishna Dite Paro. Tumar Shapati Ache. Ami to Kangal Krishna, Krishna Boli Dai Tava Pache Pache. So whatever I have spoken, I have spoken from there. So if any portion of this service has touched any corner of the heart of any of the devotees, then 100% credit goes to our Guru Parampara. All of this I offer at the lotus feet of my Guru Dev and his Guru Dev Srila Prabhupada and his Guru Dev Srila Saraswati Thakur up to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> if I have made mistakes in presenting, in speaking something which was inaccurate philosophically, spiritually, historically, logically, being a conditioned soul, I fall at your lotus feet. Please forgive me. A conditioned soul makes mistakes after mistakes after mistakes. But the only hope I have is by speaking Krishna Katha, I will gain your blessings. And then I will speak more Krishna Katha and serve more Vaishnavas and by your pleasure, these mistakes will reduce. I'm just a 26 year old with a restless mind with a very agitated consciousness. So if I'm superimposing my lower nature in my service, please kindly forgive me. And as I came here as a beggar, I'm leaving as a beggar, I finally I conclude begging for one thing. <clears throat> we know Dadati and Pratigrindhati. For offering this service, unfortunately I'm not selfless. Being selfish, I beg only one thing. If each one of you can from your heart, from the bottom of your heart, profusely shower your blessings and pray for me, pray for both of us, Arjun Sakha and myself, that we are eternally at the feet of Srila Prabhupada, eternally at the feet of the Vaishnavas, speaking, reading, singing, serving Krishna Katha and Krishna Kirtan. There is nothing equal or greater than this. There is no gain greater than this. So if all of you can profusely bless, offer your prayers and best wishes, then may these two rascals have some hope. May Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, may Srila Prabhupada protect us. One Vaishnava Parat committing offense and hurting the hearts of Vaishnavas, again we will fall down to animal forms. After so many transmigrations, we have become human beings and in that we have got, you know, spiritual life. After getting this wealth, to lose it foolishly is the biggest um, foolishness that one can do. But even if we are making mistakes and if we are under the umbrella of the protection of blessings and prayers of Vaishnavas, then even if we are not qualified, Krishna will protect. Krishna will be forced by the will of so many devotees. So I'm just concluding by saying if you can profusely bless and offer your prayers and best wishes, that again and again may I come. And again and again, may I have the opportunity to serve all of you to your satisfaction, bringing fulfillment, pleasure to the uh, heart of Srila Prabhupada, um, satisfaction to your ears, and may this cleanse the heart as a speaker. Saying this, I offer all of these six days of service at the lotus feet of Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. One shakal Om Shanti Shanti Shanti